What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Three and Out YouTube page. I'm John Middlecoff, and we are talking football all day, every day. Make sure you subscribe, like the video, share it with your friends. Let's roll, baby. What is going on, everybody? Thursday night football, Amazon Prime, and the Bills destroy the Dolphins, but obviously the headline story tonight is Tua's concussion. Uh, the fencing thing happened again with his arms. It was a really, really brutal watch. We've all been watching football for a long time, and now Tua has just two just stops you in your tracks when he's lying there and his, his hands are up, ruled out immediately, and now the questions begin. Uh, I, I have a thought on uh, an angle on this, I, I think how it's going to play out. Obviously, there's a lot of unknown, devastating night for the Dolphins, not just getting your ass kicked and having the Bills completely own you, but losing a quarterback who he was having an atrocious game. I mean, he had three picks, one pick six, and he took a bad fumble on fourth. But clearly, this overrides everything. So we'll dive into that. And then the Bills, just complete muscle flex. Uh, that's why I love the Bills coming into this game. It's why I liked him a lot this season. Uh, let, let's face it, I mean... Their franchise has a lot of similarities these last five years of the Ravens. <clears throat> they can't be the Chiefs, but they have dominated, and they look like they're headed toward another 12-win season because as long as you got Josh Allen, and Sean McDermott takes a lot of shit, but sure wins a lot with a lot of random guys on defense as well. We'll also touch on a couple other things going on in the NFL. Things change fast. You know, there's going to be a bunch of teams going 0-2, uh, how that impacts our roster. Guys are going to start getting cut when teams start losing. And I, I do think there are going to be some big picture question marks when it comes to benching quarterbacks here within the next couple of weeks. And you've already feel the momentum. And of course it's Fugazi Friday. So we got to hit on a couple of uh, love Fugazi Fridays. And uh, as we lead into the weekend, but obviously before we dive into anything Thursday night football, I got to tell you about my friends, my partners in the official picketing app of this podcast game time. Here's what you do. I was looking at it today because I was looking at some tickets for the Oklahoma-Texas game. Might have to go get down in Dallas. And it's very easy to do. You either type in the team or the event or the venue that you want to see. So if you want to go to a concert, type in the artist. You want to go see the 49ers, the Cowboys, the Alabama, type them in. See where they're playing. Where you want to see them play. And then you can pick by price point. It is extremely easy to use. I've used all the ticketing apps. This is my number one by a country mile. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code JOHN for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code JOHN for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Lowest prices guaranteed. <laughs> The crazy part about tonight with Tua is the story of the game is not the Bills killing them, is not the final score, is not the ownage that the one franchise has over the other. It And I, I saw Lewis Riddick, who I worked for with the Eagles, uh, had a good tweet. And, and it was a sad night because nobody wants to see a player laying there like that, especially one with a history is now this conversation immediately turns to, will he ever play again? And I see a lot of people on social media saying that he should retire, and that's his own decision. I do think that's easy to say. We've seen it before. When I was young, Steve Young had it happen to him. Uh, but he was older. Tua is 26 years old. Does not turn 27, I looked it up before I walked in here, till March. So I, I can't even begin to to say, yeah, he'll just hang him up. But there's going to be a lot of pressure about putting him back on the field because we saw two years ago, the Dolphins screwed up and it was a disaster for them. They were embarrassed as they should have been. And I think this is going to be out of their control. Roger was at the game. I think this is going to be a decision from the NFL. And I think the NFL is going to force their hand to not allow this guy back on the field. Because it's one thing, listen, we see guys get concussions all the time. And sometimes you can kind of tell, sometimes you can't, sometimes they're on the sideline, all of a sudden they get checked by the independent neurologist, 
and then they're just gone. And some of them are clear, right? You see the guy wobbling on the ground. Sometimes you don't really notice, and then all of a sudden he's out with a concussion. Tua's are the most cringeworthy ones I, I think I've ever seen. Twice. I had to relook up this term. It's called fencing. When his arms are straight up and his fingers are kind of moving and rigid, it, it makes your kind of heart and stomach drop. And the NFL is not going to want to see that anymore. And I was texting around, like, what do buddies and people in the league, what they think is going to happen? They're like, what if, you know, could he sign a waiver or whatever? I don't think the NFL likes that visual, as they should not. And clearly, like, I'm not some medical expert here, but tonight of the previous ones that happened in 2022, obviously it was avoidable, slide. And I would imagine that clip is going to be shown to every quarterback Friday morning beside maybe Jared Goff, any guy that could move 50 times tomorrow. Because those hits are avoidable. you got to slide. And as Herbstreit said, Tua can be a reckless runner. And he runs in, ironically, to DeMar Hamlin, who is one of the most incredible stories ever. Almost dies on the field two years later, starting safety for the Bills, who might be one of the best teams in the league. But... I'm prepared to never see the guy play again. And I think you saw the faces of Mike McDaniel as the game went on. He was shell-shocked. You saw Steven Ross, the headshot of him in the suite. He looked like he was ready to jump off a bridge. And then you saw the shot of the GM who realized they're done. It's over. Now, I didn't like the Dolphins that much anyway. Before this happened, I thought they showed their true colors. A team that doesn't have that much toughness. And I'm I'm not going to spend the night. Tonight's not the day to be critical of two of the player. But obviously it wasn't going well for him tonight at all. And the gap between them and the Bills is as wide as the Grand Canyon, if not wider. But now they have a quarterback. Obviously they just extended him to a very large contract. And the pressure is going to be on to never allow him to play quarterback for them again. Because it's not safe. And the visuals we have of those injuries doesn't look like much we see anymore in this NFL. That's the type of stuff where guys were lying there and you didn't know if they were dead or alive that happened for a long time over the history of the NFL. And then about 10, 15 years ago when the concussion stuff and the lawsuits and the NFL has pivoted and they've pivoted hard. And it's why that everyone was so uneasy with what happened a couple years ago when it felt like they were putting out a concussed player in these games who, like, it, it just didn't feel safe. Now, a lot of people are going to push to, like, you got to retire, you got to retire. That's his choice, man. Like, he has a lot of money to attempt to keep playing. Obviously, he gets a percentage of his contract is guaranteed no matter what, but you can make a lot of money if you continue playing. And at his age, I, I don't think, I understand if it's not an easy decision. But I think this decision comes from Park Avenue. And they say no mas. And there's going to be a lot of pressure from them and Raj about making sure that Tua's not on the field for them anymore. And this is going to be like when most players get a concussion, they go in the concussion protocol. Obviously, when you play on Thursday, you get a longer runway into your next game. Like, I don't think it's going to fly that next Thursday. He's cleared concussion protocol. Uh, obviously the media pressure, the fan pressure, and the league pressure. So I, I think it's fair to assume that we're not going to see Tua for a while. Now, does that mean his career's over? Who knows? Uh, we've seen crazier. Like I said, DeMar Hamlin, I think, legally died on the field. Now he's starting safety for the Bills, making plays. Almost had a pick in the corner or in the middle of the end zone. I guess it wasn't almost a pick, but hit his hand. Um, made some tackles. Had a bunch of tackles last week. Like, isn't just a contributing member like he was last year. Like he's a starter. So I, I never say never uh, just in, in life in general, but I, I do think tonight was a game changing moment uh, with this specific player and the way that it happened again, the same exact visual, which is really hard to describe, but you know, when you see it and you just kind of, Go speechless. It, it was tough to watch. I do think, you know, the Dolphin season's over, so I, I don't even know what else <clears throat> to say. I didn't think they were a playoff team at the start of the season. 
Uh, they're very, very fortunate right now to not be 0-2. But Skyler Thompson, who ironically was drafted 15 spots ahead of Brock Purdy. So it shows you, like, most seventh-round quarterbacks look pretty shitty. And he looked tonight like a, this, no pun intended, a fish out of water. But the Dolphins are done, and the Bills, I, they didn't want to do it. I mean, they wanted to beat them and blow them out, but obviously they didn't want to injure Tua. And um, one conversation I would imagine that's going to come up, my guess in the next 24 hours, Tom Brady to the Dolphins. It crossed my mind. Remember a couple years ago, a lot of rumors about the Dolphins wanting to get Tom Brady as their quarterback. It was like pampering stuff when he was in New England. It would be cool. Like I, I'm not against the story, but at this point in time, he's several years older than even when he retired. It's not like he's making $10 million to call games. He's making 37. And even though his first game clearly did not go that well, I think at this point in time, I would be stunned. But sometimes you'll just be listening to podcasts and you just hear people talk and it kind of makes you think like, I bet Tom misses it. It's like, yeah, how would he not miss it? I would imagine his arm still works. But from a football standpoint, even if he did have 10% interest, awful fit. I mean, they have their offensive line is abysmal to start with. And now they got a bunch of injuries. So I think you just look at Miami. No Tua for the foreseeable future. Skylar Thompson, whoever else, maybe they can sign, sniff around the practice squad, and their season is in major trouble. And you saw at the end of the game when they are on offense down 31-10, to 10, and Hill and Waddle are just chilling on the bench. And even Herb Street's like, yeah, it's not the best look. And he's right. Because tonight, before the Tua injury, was a culture night. And Mike McDaniel is beloved by certain people in the media. Uh, he's got this quirky little shtick going. He's never won an important game as a head coach. He was getting molly tonight before the Tua story just overshadowed. I mean, he was embarrassing tonight. Uh, I, I regretted not putting more money on the Buffalo Bills about five minutes before kickoff because that game was over, and that game was over quick. But the Bills' culture... We talk a lot about the Ravens, and people think I'm like negative with the Ravens. I have a ton of respect for them. The only th- the only people that they really can't beat in big games, and we saw it last year, is like, yeah, Mahomes. Do I think they could beat every other team in the playoffs? 100%. I think the same thing about the Bills. I would say the Bills right now and the Ravens are mirror images of themselves. They are championship-level teams who, and, and cultures most specifically, have defensive-minded head coaches, have a physical culture, and have star quarterbacks. Now, I like Josh more than Lamar, and I like the Ravens roster typically more than the Bills because for whatever reason, the Bills on defense, they just always have so many injuries. But tonight, off a short week, they have guys that, let's face it, for every Vaughn Miller they got, they got a couple other guys I got to look up. I'm like, I don't really know who this player is. And they're... They're running around with their hair on fire, making tackles, and their quarterback is awesome. But one game-changing player for them that has added a physical element that the Ravens have always been able to do because they always have a good running game is James Cook. And you saw him tonight. He looks awesome. You saw him last week. He looks awesome. You saw him last season. He looks awesome. To me, he's kind of changed them because for several years, it was like they were so pass-dependent on Josh. And when you play in these frigid temperatures late in the season, you're not just going to be able to throw for 350 yards. It was always a bugaboo for the Packers. It's like you might play some January games in Lambeau. We know you got sweet wide receivers. This was during the Aaron Rodgers era. And then what looks like, you know, if Jordan Love is healthy, what's going to happen during this? You've got to have a physical back. What do they do? They went out inside Josh Jacobs. They had Aaron Jones. Like that guy really, really helps in cold inclement weather games and that's what james cook is so can the bills beat the chiefs the roster i don't think is good enough and defensively they're not good enough but i do think they have a championship level culture and they have a championship like i believe josh allen's a championship level quarterback does that mean he'll ever win one like i believe charles barkley was a championship level player never won one everyone that ever played against dan marino say he was one of the best players i ever played against never won a super bowl so i don't know if it's going to happen Obviously, they've had opportunities in the past, and their coach got a little tight. 
But Sean McDermott's really good at his job. And I thought this at the beginning of the season. I feel strongly, more strongly about it tonight. I think they're going to cruise to this division. And it would be their fifth straight division. They're having the the Patriot ownage thing that the Patriots had for 20 years. The difference is the Patriots were rattling off championships. And the Bills, for whatever reason, even going back to the early 90s, haven't proven to win it. But in what world through these, uh, we'll see the Jets this weekend, but even, let's just even say they win. Let's say the Jets win by 20. Could you assume the Jets, a 40-year-old Aaron Rodgers, all their culture question marks could beat this Bills team? How could you assume that? If they were playing next week in New York or in Buffalo, how could you bet on the Jets? How could you possibly do that? I've been saying this forever about the Bills versus Miami. In what world do we think these are even close to equals? They're not. The Bills are chasing the Chiefs. Not the, these other teams are just little roadblocks on their way to the playoffs where they go every single year. So obviously awful night with Tua. It sucks. Dolphin season ends abruptly on September 12th. Uh, cool moment for DeMar Hamlin for sure. And obviously the Bills, man, I, I, I feel even strongly, more strongly about them now than I did at the beginning of the season just because they got a pretty good thing going. They really do. Joe Brady also has resurrected his career after going to Carolina, getting fired by Matt Rule, going to Buffalo as a quarterback coach, and that seamless transition when they fired Dorsey and elevated him, they have looked like a different animal. And maybe it's his ability to utilize James Cook, settling Josh down a little bit tonight, but, man, the Bills look good. Touchdowns, PD, Huddy, take it into the house, in for six. I like to call it a tug. Whatever you call touchdown, one thing's for sure. Touchdowns matter more at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. On the ground, in the air, special teams or defense, we do not care how you score them. We just want to bet touchdowns. And DraftKings Sportsbook is the number one place to bet touchdowns. Ready to place your first NFL bet? Try betting on something simple like a player to score a touchdown. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app and make your bet today. Ready to do a touchdown dance of your own? I know I do it all the time. New DraftKings customers bet five bucks to get 250 in bonus bets instantly and get one month of NFL Plus Premium. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code John. That's code J-O-H-N for new customers to get 250 in bonus bets when you bet just five bucks and get one month NFL Plus Premium. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Okay, let's dive into a couple other things. Uh, the thing is, after this weekend, you're going to have some 0-2 teams. And some are going to feel way worse than others, but they're all going to feel really shitty. And the cool part about football, unlike the other two sports, you know, team sports and baseball and basketball, because of the contract setup, for the most part, there is a very, very small percentage of players on scholarship and as we have seen over the years, even the players on quote-unquote scholarships because their contracts are enormous doesn't hold much weight when you're losing. And the thing in football is, and this is cool, so many guys, random guys, right? Late-round draft picks, undrafted free agents, guys who have bounced around on practice squads, make the 53-man roster. And that is an incredible accomplishment to go into week one on the 53-man roster. But you do have to keep your spot because in this league, and trust me, for three years in the NFL, well, I guess the two I worked in the office, I printed out the waiver wire every single day and handed that thing out. And as the season goes, obviously when people get injured, you have to make transactions. But people will get waived, people will get benched, and people will get cut because they have been benched constantly throughout the season. And it usually happens, obviously it could happen after wins, if, remember, Belichick, the one dude was late to a meeting. I mean, there are specific instances. But when you play poorly, especially when you're not making a lot of money, your job is always in jeopardy. So just because you make the 53-man roster, if you make it and you're the starting right tackle, you're the starting middle linebacker, the starting safety, or the starting slot wide receiver, or slot corner, you start playing crappy, you not only will get benched, you might get cut. And maybe they want you on the practice squad, but your spot on the big roster can go sayonara in, in one game. 
and definitely over the course of a couple games when that team is losing. Because especially this early in the season, you know, position coaches or coordinators are not going to get fired yet, but players will be sent home, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, you're no longer starting for us or you're no longer rotating in. We're cutting you to make a spot for another guy to see if that guy's any better. And that's going to start happening after this week because when teams lose, changes are made. And I, I think when you look at the schedule, there are, I got a little implosion watch that I'm keeping an eye on. First and foremost, we talked about the scholarship. Daniel Jones makes a lot of money. But can you afford to look awful against the Vikings, get your ass kicked, and then play Washington, who is not very good, who has a rookie quarterback, and keep losing and keep your job? Now, even if they look bad again and he plays bad, do I think he'll get benched week three? I would probably bet against it. But the one thing is, when there is momentum and people start talking, fans start talking, you can you know the owner's thinking it, there's this negative emotional avalanche that starts rolling down the hill. And it's clear where everything is headed. And once that starts, the only way to stop it, like in real life, there's no stopping one of those avalanches. It just either stops on its own or takes everything out. In football, you better win a game and play well. Because if you don't, those they're eventually going to make a move. And the margin for error with this player, because all the previous negativity, couldn't be any higher. So Daniel Jones better play well, and he better play well fast. And if you're Brian Dayball, it like feels like you're coaching for a job a little bit. So that, that's going to be a fascinating thing to watch. I like the Giants this weekend, and I feel disgusting doing that, but I'm no dummy. <laughs> it's like... Very possible they lose. Very possible Daniel Jones. I don't care whether he's playing Deion Sanders or the worst secondary in the league. Can throw pick sixes at any moment. Could be trouble. One team, and this is, it was evident the other night on Monday Night Football, and it's like, oh, they're playing one of the best teams. That, that wasn't the point. It was how little effort it felt like they were playing with. It was like how little adjustments it felt like they have in their back pocket. And I think the thing with the Jets is you look at most of the good teams in the NFL, they've been playing together for a while. So part of just playing football, you're going to have some bad weeks. You actually learn a lot from that as a group, uh, as individual units, offense and defense, how hard you get coached that week, the changes you make, and obviously the successes you have as a group, right? Look at the 49ers and the Chiefs. They've been playing together for half a decade or more. The Ravens, the core of their group, has been together for a while. The Lions are now going on four-plus years as this core. And you look at the Jets, you're like, Aaron's played one game in four plays with all these guys. One game in four plays. And a lot of question marks with the coaching staff. Doesn't feel like that many people believe in that Hackett. I think they got implosion written all over them if they don't win this week. And everyone and their mother's picking them. I, I think the Titans actually played pretty well last week beside a block punt and one of the worst plays you'll ever see from Will Levis. But that defense is good. That defense looked really, really physical against the Bears. I mean, th they were embarrassing the Bears. And I, like I said, rookie quarterback, but they still got Roma Dunze, Keenan Allen, DeAndre Swift, Cole Komet, DJ Moore. That was an ass kicking. I like the Bears personnel a lot more than the Jets in the totality of it. Now, Rodgers is clearly better than Caleb Williams as of today, but I don't think that's an easy game. And then they play the Patriots on Thursday night. You talk about kind of a powder keg of just this thing could get ugly and this thing could get ugly fast. Just better win this week. And last but not least, a lot like the Daniel Jones thing, this Deshaun Watson has been going on for longer. And unlike Daniel Jones, there is this whole other element of character, lawsuits, sexual assault that is just something that just people are disgusted and tired of, right? So when you play well and you're going through shit, it's pro sports. <laughs> it's about winning and losing. It's about making money. No one cares. But you better win if you're going to get no one caring. The media will, but you don't have to listen to them when you're winning. When you start losing, 
it's really hard to hide. And that's how the Browns feel. Like, they don't get to hide behind success. They had it last year, and Deshaun was nowhere to be seen because they put him on injured reserve. Flacco got to seal the day. And Flacco was a great story. It's like, oh, great family man, off the couch, taking his kids to school. It was, it was easy to wrap your arms around. The Deshaun Watson that we saw on Sunday against the Cowboys has kind of been the same guy we've seen throughout his career since he got traded. Below average. Does not look good. Like the twitch is gone. Used to be, like when you watch a lot, you watch Jaden Daniels, when he makes a move, you're like, damn, he's quick. Right? You watch Josh Allen, when he moves, you're like, damn, it's a twitchy athlete. You watch Deshaun, he just looks like meh. I, I, to me, his athleticism feels like a shell of himself. And obviously the ability to play quarterback does not look good. And the playmaking is completely gone. So I don't see what's going to change. <laughs> like all of a sudden you're just going to find it. I'm not saying you can't like throw a touchdown or whatever, but I have a hard time just like, oh yeah, Deshaun Watson went 24 or 30 through three touchdowns. He was one of the best players of the day. I think those days are way gone <laughs> and not coming back. No one likes this guy beside David Malgetta, who made a ton of money off him. And then Deshaun's family, who obviously is probably getting some money too. Like, <laughs> And his lawyers. I mean, his lawyers are making a lot of money off Deshaun. But in terms of Cleveland, the fan base, they got to be out. And I would imagine, and they got to be good company men, the coaching staff can't be high on this player. Now, do I think he's going to get benched week three if he has a bad game week two? No, I do not. But I've started to come around this week of like, yeah, this probably ain't going to last long. How it works, the financial ramifications, I don't know. But I have a hard time, and we've seen recent examples of Carson Wentz. Now, he got traded. Nobody. The XFL wouldn't trade for this guy right now, right? We saw Russell Wilson get cut. It'd be more financially punitive because of the numbers. Uh, now there are ways you can split it up over years, but it's still pretty complicated. But I think you kind of feel that hourglass, that sand's going and it's going, and I don't know how much is left and how long they'll just let him just be terrible every week. So to me, that is something to keep an eye on. Like this is a story that feels like it's not slowing down. eBay Motors is here for the ride. You know, the first car I ever got I was 16 years old and my grandpa gave me a ride and like any young lad who got a car that let's face it would not have been my first choice I had to touch it up a little bit and we tinted out the windows we added a big subwoofer to the back and you could hear me from miles away coming home my, my parents sure loved me for that one so did my neighbors but I think the key to any young person getting a car is to personalize a little bit because you're probably not going to get your dream car. And as you get older, you know, you kind of become a car person or you don't. But you definitely have preferences, right? Some of us like bigger cars. I know I do. I've only had big cars, SUVs. And uh, there are certain non-negotiables. I just like, I like three rows of seats. Now, ideally, I don't have kids right now, so I take out that third row of seat and I like a big... You know, I, I like a lot of trunk room. Some people, you know, don't like SUVs, like smaller cars. I, I've never been that big since my high school car of tinting the windows. I don't care if you see me or not, but I, I know some people, like, the first thing they do is tint the windows. It's crazy. The older you get, you know, I, I had to have the subwoofers. I, I The subwoofer, I couldn't listen to music for five minutes with the subwoofer like I did when I was younger. But th there is something very, very special about that first car. I don't care how many cars you get since, how much money you make to get sweeter cars. You never quite forget that first ride and uh, some of the memorable moments that you had in it in your high school years. So with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you can make sure your ride stays running smoothly. Brake kits, LED headlights, roof rack bumpers, whatever your baby needs ebay motors has it and with ebay guaranteed fit it's guaranteed to fit your ride the first time every time or your money back plus at these prices you're burning rubber not cash keep your ride or die alive 
at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. A couple things for Fugazi Friday. I got this DM and it made me laugh because it made me think of my grandpa. Uh, this is from Coleman. Fugazi Friday. I was sitting on a plane waiting to take off from Phoenix. The dude next to me pulls out a used Kleenex from his pocket and blows his nose. That part is fine. The gross part is that he put his tissue back in his pocket. Used it over and over again. I just hate when people reuse the same tissue and put it in their pocket. It's got to be a Fugazi, right? It's not technically a Fugazi, but it made me laugh. My grandpa, Woody, Woodrow Middlecoff, uh, R.I.P., he he came from a generation. He was born like in the Great Depression, fought in World War II. And I remember being a little kid, and just he was not alone. They would have like that handkerchief that was like something you'd put around like people in Western movies that would rob banks, would run around their faces. And he'd have it in his pocket. Anytime he needed to blow his nose, he'd pull that bad boy out. And he was not alone. <laughs> like, depending on where you lived. There were a lot of people, especially older people, that use this move. I don't think I've seen that move happen in 15 plus years. But I do believe, and maybe it's just like, when you grew up, these aren't hard times now. And these, listen, depend on who you are, how much money you're making, inflation. I'm not saying they're always easy times for everybody. But like, you grew up in the Great Depression. You grew up in the 40s, the 50s. Life was a little harder. Not debatable. Not debatable. And I do wonder if there was like a scarcity element to that. So maybe like this guy's dad did that and this has been his go-to move. It is disgusting. I'm more of a fan of the snot rocket. Obviously, you got to be outside to pull that move off. But I couldn't even imagine blowing my nose and putting it back in my pocket. Partly because you'd have to do a perfect fold. Like what if you had a lot of phlegm and it gets on your shorts or your jeans or whatever? It's just disgusting. But I do think that historically for a lot of people that grew up of a certain generation, maybe they didn't have clean out uh, like boxes of Kleenex. Maybe they were expensive. I don't know. But I, he was not alone with that move. There, there were a lot of people that used to pull that out of their back pocket. Traditional cable versus internet. I know what you have been harping on this for a while, but there was a pivotal moment that happened over the weekend that pushed me to make the switch. I'm a Niners fan living in North Carolina, and therefore the regional game is always the Panthers. For the opening week of the season, the television game at 1 p.m. was the Panthers and Saints. No matter how terrible the score got and how awful the play was, I felt like uh, they refused to change it to a different game. I felt like Malcolm McDowell and Clockwork Orange having my eyes forced open to watch the horrors of Bryce Young in that offense. Never again! Sharing for those who were like me and choose the comfort over change. YouTube TV is where it's at. Now, here's the thing. If, if I didn't have the NFL package on my YouTube TV, or you didn't, and you were living where you live, you only get multiple regional games. So you get whatever your regional game is, and then depending on how the day is set up, another game, because that's a Fox game, a game on CBS. But you don't get unlimited games unless you pay for it, which is the Sunday package, which I gladly pay for. But just because you have YouTube TV, you can still get put in that predicament. You are at the control of the network changing the game. I, I never understand this, and clearly there are rules. And I, you know, when it comes to networks, but like you get to a point, and it doesn't happen that often in the NFL. But the Saints game, I stopped paying attention after like a couple minutes in the third quarter. It was so over. And there were other games going on in the NFC that, you know, people want to watch uh, or just that are more interesting. Now, I I also struggle, like, understand if I was running a network, it's one thing if this was baseball and you play 100, you only play 17 of these. So you don't get that many bites of the apple to watch a team. Now, it's not exactly like this is the Dallas Cowboys. You're talking about the Carolina Panthers, but I hear you. But just know this, if you get YouTube TV, you don't just automatically get all the games. Like, you have to purchase that, which should be an easy purchase if you're a football fan. I get a lot of this because obviously getting married in, you know, about six months, about the Fugazi of wedding costs. And I'll go back to the vet thing. 
like the vet thing, my issue with that is I, it's like, I can't speak to my dog. So the dog being sick and she's just battled. I mean, she is a, she's a tough little dog. She beat the disease. I think feels normal now, but like the, the communication's impossible, even with human healthcare, at least the individual can say like that. That's not right. I don't feel that or something's off. You got to check this dog's helpless. It can only bark and lick. Right. So the wedding, I get a lot of this, like how crazy your wedding costs. Well, everything costs are high. So someone hit me up, like, what's the cheapest budget non-courthouse, which was my idea, but got shot down fast. You've ever seen for a wedding that's su successfully executed. I think the thing with other people getting married, unless you're really close friends with them or they're a family member, it's not like you brag or really promote what you spent on the wedding. Everyone just kind of knows it's expensive, right? And depending on how many people you have, right? We're trying to do a smaller wedding. And it's still gonna, like, what's the budget for your own wedding? There's not like a specific budget, but I mean, had a ballpark, you know, we're going to Nashville. I don't know. We hope like 50 grand probably end up being 75. But again, we're doing a smaller wedding. You know, there might be 60 people there. Like I said, I would have been cool with going to the courthouse. I'm about to be 40 years old. I didn't need it. But I, I do understand the importance of it, not just for her, but for family so I, 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 I've not only come around, like I, I, I want to do it, but like, she's very hands-on with this. The costs are high. I mean, for, and I'm talking non the venue. I mean, we're getting married in four seasons, but the actual venue actually wasn't that expensive. It really wasn't, especially because maybe it's just Nashville is different than like Los Angeles or Scottsdale or New York or whatever, uh, in terms of price. But where they really get you is like the flowers. I mean, the price of flowers, but like whatever the price was, when you hear some of these numbers, like if you know someone like, yeah, we spent 60 grand on a wedding in 2016. Well, it's not really comparable. It's like, yeah, I, I bought this car for 40 grand, 2014. Well, yeah, that car now is $79,000. So it's like you, you can't, you do it with housing all the time. Like, God, you bought that house for 400 grand? Yeah, well, it was 2010. <laughs> One of the craziest financial crises in the history of the world just happened. So, like, it's not apples to apples. So I don't get as angry uh, like I do. Like, every time I go to Starbucks and our or order's just two large cold brews, I get half and half. She gets a little cold foam. Sometimes, you know, I'd like, I like I make coffee most mornings, but every once in a while, you're just like, you know what? I just want a Starbucks cold brew, get in the car at like 6.15 in the morning, go there. The line's always long. And then they hand me the thing, and it's like $16. And it's like, listen, I, you're working. Uh, I I can't tip you, though. If you told me my two cold, cold brews were, I don't know, $7.50, I'd have no problem just giving you a 10 and telling you to keep it. But when you're handing me two cold brews for $17 or whatever it turns out to be every morning, like I feel zero shame tipping. Where, like, I do get the wedding, like, I... I haven't been turned off, but the flowers are kind of crazy, but everything else I kind of go, yeah, it's just no matter what you do now, you need a new air conditioner, you need to get your house painted, you need whatever. I mean, <laughs> you know, buying clothes, I, you name it. Everything is dramatically more you in a weird way. You just kind of be able to come numb to it and just try to figure out either a way around it or hit up as many people. I would say the best part about 2024 is it's never been easier to like source or crowdsource, right? So it's like, okay, you're offering me, let's just pick a number. You tell me the flowers are going to be $10,000. I'm just picking an even number. Well, I'm going to hit up 10 more people and see what I can find. And I'll promise you, if you're willing to do the work, you find someone that will give you the same thing for $6,200. So you've always had the yellow pages or whatever, but it's never been easier with Instagram, DMs, internet. Like you can find a lot of options. It takes effort and takes some time. But I, I, I think, and I've said this forever, like the difference of my generation and my parents' generation. My parents would use the same people for every task, no matter what it was. Like they would go to the same car wash my entire life. They would have the same people if they needed a, uh, you know, wanted to remodel something, they would use that same guy for everything they ever did, whether he's good or bad. They was like very loyal 
that you know people older people were just very loyal. You just use to use. I'll use you if you suck. I'll get a new guy. <laughs> I went through three landscapers. I'm like, this guy's kind of fucking me. And you're like, oh, this guy's kind of screwing me too. Because you just kind of ask around. You're like, God, they're they're charging you what? And you just things change quick. And I would say the the ease in which you can find different options now. You've always been able to find different options, but it's never been easier to contact those options, I, I would say. And just find more options that might not have been in the phone book or whatever, just because of the internet. So that's been using that. Not me. I haven't done anything, to be honest with you. But she has. Uh, it just takes effort. 